great day, everybody. Welcome. This is your UB Fit Short for today. Today's UB Fit Short is canola oil, a.k.a. Canada oil. So why am I talking about this? First off, let me tell you this. I might say canola oil, canola oil. My New York accent might kick in, so you know what I'm talking about. It's canola oil, all right? The reason why I'm talking a bit about this today is many people are now convinced that canola oil is the way to go because it's everywhere and it's in everything. So I want to take a couple of minutes for you to think about this, and you might have to rethink what you're doing. So the big deal to me was in the last, I was going to say the last five to ten years, canola oil has pretty much been in most foods. It's been the food processing industry's oil of choice. And matter of fact, even according to mainstream media, canola oil is good for the heart because it's monounsaturated fat similar to Olive oil. Olive oil is a great oil to you, to you to consume. But sadly, there's also other issues because mainstream media is now has these various health blogs and everything's on the media to kind of influence us. And you have big corporations taking aggressive marketing actions and tactics to make this a big thing for us. So did you ever wonder where canola oil comes from? That'd be a good question, right? First off, there's no such thing as a canola plant. No such thing. There's, it doesn't, it isn't, it doesn't, nothing. There's nothing like it. Now, I've heard of olive oil because it comes from olives. I've heard of sunflower oil. It comes from sunflower seeds. Peanut oil comes from peanuts. Canola oil comes from the rapeseed plant, which is a weed, and it's actually part of the mustard family of plants. So let me break this down. Canola oil is not a canola plant. It's a rapeseed plant. Where does rapeseed come from? Rapeseed oil was considered so toxic that the FDA banned it for human consumption in 1956. So when Canadian growers genetically engineered a new variety of rapeseed in 1970, which had a lower content of a toxic that was called uric acid, the reason why it had an issue in, in the 50s because it was so toxic with the uric acid that they decided people can't, it's just too toxic. So they decided to bring it down a notch and they re-engineered it and now they came up with this brand new name. The new name that they came up with was canola oil for marketing reasons. Basically because companies did not want to be associated with a product that had rape in it. Rapeseed was an oil that was well known to be toxic, right? So let me break it down further. The term canola oil or canola came from the term of Canada oil. Canada oil is canola oil. So they changed it to, can to canola because they wanted to convince the customers of this brand new product. It's no longer rapeseed oil and now it's safe to eat. And the truth is rapeseed is the most toxic of all food oil plants. And even insects won't even eat it. It's a weed. Insects won't even eat it. They don't, they don't want to even touch it. It's still toxic to them. So let me get this straight. The oil is very effective as an insecticide, and it's also the primary ingredient for many organic non-chemical pesticide control products that are sprayed on vegetables to kill bugs. So now in 1995, the rapeseed was gen genetically engineered to contain a bacterial DNA that would make it resistant to toxic herbicides like Roundup. So now they even made it stronger. So the bugs don't want to eat it. And even if you put insecticide like Roundup on it, it doesn't even die. So remember what I said about the rapeseed? It was part of the mustard family. Well, the oil that was sourced from the chemical warfare agent, it was called mustard gas. Well, that was basically from rapeseed which was banned after World War I because of the horrible effects that it had on the lungs and on the skin. So now canola oil is used mostly for industrial purposes because it's a good lubricant. So let me, let me understand this then. So we should not really be eating or consuming something that factories basically place a primary concern on. That's what they use to lubricate their engines. However, we're... You understand what I'm saying, right? So the oil is a semi-drying oil, and it's used as fuel. It's used for soap, and it's also used for synthetic rubber base. 
So even, look, don't even put it on your clothes. You drop a little bit of this on your clothes, number one, it's going to permanently stain your clothes, and then it's going to leave a rancid smell over time. So the canola oil actually in the body, it forms like a latex, a latex substance that slows down blood, throw, blood flow throughout the body. So here's the deal. Let's go back and drop some science on you. The Canadian government decided to subsidize most of the rapeseed planting harvest and has made millions of dollars since it was introduced for public consumption. So now even farms in the United States jump on the bandwagon. They want to grow rapeseed. So the U.S. actually purchases about 80% of Canada's edible oils. Canola happens to be 60% of it. So the plant, number one, it's cheap. Number two, it's easy to maintain. It basically is insect friendly. They don't want to eat it. It's resistant. So plus it's cheaper and easier to use and process for most of the foods. And it's very, it's not that expensive because it's very cheap than the healthier cold pressed products that you should be using like olive oil. So because the olive oil, well, because of the canola oil is so cheap, it is widely used in the food industry. So you see it everywhere. And matter of fact, it's even in most of your organic foods. So let's break this down even further. In the early 1980s, canola oil came out with this initial marketing campaign in the United States. Now, Although I can't verify this claim, in 1985, the Canadian government allegedly paid the FDA a sum of $50 million to have Cronola placed on what's called the grass list. The grass list is called uh, generally recognized and safe list. It's actually furnished by the FDA to tell us as humans in the United States that this product is safe. So in my opinion, Honestly, the reason why that was done is so they could bypass the more lengthy process, it's more expensive approval process, that will force the government to go through a longer period of time. Well, that was bypassed. So here's some homework I want you to do. I want you to do some research and find out the negative effects on Cronola on laboratory animals. There was testing on laboratory animals, but let me ask you this. The question would be to me is that there was no studies done in the United States on humans before money was spent to promote this product in the United States. So let's make this clear. There was no medical research required on humans to determine whether this product is safe for human consumption before it hit the grocery shelves in the United States. I'm going to give you a moment of silence to think about that for a minute. All right. So here's the other issue with this. There are all, there's some other products that are also on the grass list. Number one, you might have remembered the controversial drug that was called Viox. Viox was recalled and was banned, and it was a terrible product. Hurt a lot of people, and they got sued big time. Also, you're probably familiar with another artificial food coloring. It's called Red Dye Number 3, which was banned from our cosmetics in 1990. Most of the countries around the world have already banned the dye for human consumption, yet the FDA still permits the red dye 3 in our foods that needs that rich red color. So it's still on that grass list. Give you a moment of silence to think about that again. So at least the FDA did something right. So they took a stance. At least they did this. And they decided to protect our babies from unknown risk of canola oil. So the FDA now prohibits canola oil to be used in infant formulas. Makes you wonder now, right? So infants can't consume it, but we humans, adults, we are basically, we can. So that should be a big red flag, folks. I think you should think about that. What's wrong with this product? So matter of fact, I don't even remember. Do you remember Cronola being mass advertised on commercials? Because honestly, I don't. I don't remember. The only thing I do remember is that all of a sudden it showed up on my grocery shelves at eye level. Right at eye level. I'm like, wow, that's pretty good. And it happened to have been the cheapest of all the oils that are out there. So we're like, wow, that's pretty good. Cronola oil, every 
you know, it seems to be a big deal. It's all over your shelves. So I'm going to go for it. So all of us got duped now into buying this cheaper canola oil instead of buying the less safer, uh, the, actually the safer olive oil. Because now canola is blended in everything, even most of your organic foods as an added ingredient. So here's some of the good things that are about canola. There is actually some good things. The, the main claim for canola would be that it's higher in unsaturated fats and it's probably the highest in unsaturated fats in any other oil, making it the most heart healthy on the market. But that may be true, but it also it's polyunsaturated oil, which lowers cholesterol by, by driving it out of the blood system. But the cholesterol has to go somewhere. So guess where it's going? It goes into your colon, where it may increase the fact that you get colon cancer, which happened to be the number two cancer in the United States. So you got a you got a toss up which one you going with. So it's cheaper than olive oil, right? It has a and olive oil has a long history of documented health benefits. So olive oil, the problem with olive oil that there's not enough to go around in the world to meet the industry needs, and it's too it's too expensive. So processed food companies are not going to spend money to put olive oil, which is the better oil in our foods. God forbid if they do something like that. So here's some of the bad issues with canola. You know there got to be some bad ones. There's some medical studies that came out that basically says canola and soy oils show a definite link in the development of prostate cancer in men. It also depresses the immune system and causes it to go into sleep. So while you're eating it, your immune system actually goes into shutdown mode. The other problem that, and it's probably one of the most issues that canola oil is genetically modified. So there's not enough to go around, but there's plenty of it. The problem though is now everybody seems to be stir frying, and if you stir fry canola oil, there's these carcinogenic uh, chemicals that immerse and it can give you a chance of lung cancer. So here's the recommendations I'm gonna give you for healthier fats and oils. You can get some of your good fats from unprocessed whole foods like avocados, nuts, seeds, sesame, sunflower, and flax seeds. Some of the great oils you can use would be flaxseed, extra virgin olive oil, sesame oil, sunflower oil, virgin coconut oil. So I say all this to say that you need to do some research on canola on your own. So do some homework. Make sure you do some research and be careful where you get your information from because there's a lot of there's a lot of, a lot of media that not, does not want you to know that canola is not good for you because it's a money maker in the United States. So I hope you got something out of that. If you got some questions, hit me below. And if anything, I want you to be safe out there and beware what you're eating. So have a great day and you be fit.